This is part two of the tragic and heartbreaking story of persecution known as the Holocaust. And what we need to remember is that this was not just one man, not just Adolf Hitler committing these atrocities. He had millions of supporters that helped him commit these atrocities. And so the question is, how did Adolf Hitler get so many people to support him? Well, Hitler and the Nazis used propaganda, fear, manipulation, and violence. Let's start with propaganda. Propaganda is biased communication that is meant to convince the viewer to act in a specific way. And so some of the methods they used of propaganda were teaching racial theory. Adolf Hitler was obsessed with ideas about race, and he spread his beliefs in racial purity and the superiority of the Germanic race, as he called it the Aryan or Master Race. And he pronounced that this race must remain pure in order to one day take over the world. For Hitler, the ideal Aryan was blonde, blue-eyed, and tall. And you've seen a few pictures of him already, and if you look closer, you will notice that he is neither blonde, blue-eyed, or tall. And this seems uh, a bit ironic, and a little bit strange. And I think what it shows you is that when this hatred is spreading, and there are people to blame, that people are willing to believe anything even if what's right in front of their eyes might be telling them something different. The Nazis also used book burning, where they uh, forced all Germans to destroy or burn books that were written by non-Germans. So uh, books that were written by people from other uh, countries, races, ethnicities, and especially books written by Jewish authors. And by doing this, they were clamping down on the type of knowledge that uh, the rest of the country would be able to acquire. If you're interested in this, there is a book, amazing book named The Book Thief uh, by Marcus Suzak, and it references uh, the book burnings by the Nazis. Some more propaganda would be by Nazi parades, where the soldiers would march uh, in perfect step in front of large crowds and audiences, uh, showing their, uh, uh, their power in their military. And they also used the Hitler Youth, which was basically a, a Nazi Boy Scout group, essentially, where the young, uh, young boys and young men would dress uh, in uniforms similar to the Nazis, and um, it would be seen as a point of pride to be part of the Hitler Youth. If you're interested in these types of topics, uh, the book Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry and The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank uh, would be two uh, pieces of literature that I would recommend for this topic. Another way that the Nazis were able to get massive groups of um, Germans to participate would be through fear. Uh, one was called the Protective Squad, the Schutzstaffel, or the SS. And as you can see in these two images, um, they were a fearsome group that would go around and just uh, ensure that the people of the country were following the rules and laws set in place. They also used the Gestapo, the Nazi secret police. And this this would create, uh, I mean, just looking at them is, creates fear. Uh, but also, people in the country would be fearful that if they didn't turn in their neighbors, uh, people that they knew that might be Jewish, uh, if they didn't turn them in, that the Gestapo or the SS would come after them. So these fear tactics would force people to turn in their neighbors and turn in people they knew. Uh, that brings us to Hitler's final solution. Um, his final solution would be um, basically what he called the Jewish question. And to him, the final solution was to create a master race composed of Aryans, as I mentioned earlier, to cleanse Germany in this uh, very racist uh, thinking and phrase, and by committing a genocide, which is killing of an entire population of people. And so Holocaust, um, the definition of this word actually is the destruction or slaughter on a mass scale. And in this case, the Holocaust that we're discussing is uh, between 1933 and 1945, uh, the time that Hitler rose to power and the time that the war, uh, World War II ended. And in the Holocaust, this systematic persecution and annihilation of Jews uh, had six million innocent victims. Six million people were murdered uh, as a result of 
this systematic persecution by the Nazis. And we tend to think of the Holocaust as being just Jews that were being murdered, but six million of the uh, murders were Jewish, while another five million, for eleven million total, were different groups, different ethnic groups, uh, different uh, religions and backgrounds, and as you can see there, uh, some of the groups that were targeted uh, by the by the Nazis during the Holocaust. This photograph right here is called the Tower of Faces. It is a hallway in the United States Holocaust Memorial and Museum in Washington, D.C., and this very tall room shows photographs of the victims, um, where you can put a face to these numbers and realize that these are not just imaginary numbers, that these were people with lives and families and uh, futures and pasts, and uh, this memorial um, really paints a very strong picture of what the tragedy of the Holocaust brought. A few uh, ideas of what was going on in these concentration camps. As we talked about uh, last time, the many of these victims had been sent to these concentration camps, these forced labor camps, to work for the Nazis as they were fighting this war. Um, many of them died of hunger. Um, or that was just a reality of this place was uh, constant hunger, um, which also caused death. Uh, clearly humiliation. Um, the, these people were treated as much less than human, uh, in fact much less than animal even. These were places that were full of disease and uh, mass death on massive scales. These two images here show you uh, the emaciated figures of the people that were living in these concentration camps and, and trying their hardest to survive. If you're interested in these topics, uh, these are two books that I would recommend. It Rained Warm Bread by Gloria Moskowitz Sweet, uh, who is the uh, child of a Holocaust survivor, and a book by Alan Gratz named Prisoner B3087, which is a uh, work of fiction, but it is historical fiction and is really a, a really good book. Um, in 1942, it became clear that Hitler's goal was uh, mass extermination. The final stage is when he realized and uh, was pushing the idea that using one bullet per victim uh, was not efficient enough, and he turned this murder into a basically a, a factory of death. They began to march groups of people into these gas chambers under the guise of being um, showers, basically, and they would walk into the showers, they would leave their things behind, and instead of water coming out of the uh, faucets or nozzles, it would be poisonous gas. On the top left there is um, a pile of shoes representing uh, lots of lots of murders in one of the gas chambers. On the bottom there are eyeglasses, and on the right are wedding rings. And so it really, again, shows you how massive this scale of death was. Around 12,000 people had been killed per day. But through all of this, there were survivors, and uh, many of these survivors went on to create very uh, extraordinary lives. Uh, the first I want to mention is Elie Wiesel. He uh, survived uh, the Holocaust and lived until 2016. He wrote a great trilogy of books called Night, Dawn, and Day. I would highly recommend those three books. Another example is Oskar Schindler, who owned a factory in Germany, and he employed over 1,000 Jews, and he spent essentially his entire fortune paying bribes to Nazis to protect his workers and to save their lives. He saved countless lives. Another is Freddy Overstegen, uh, and uh, she was uh, actually in the Netherlands, and she joined the Dutch resistance, along with her sister Truus Overstegen. They became armed assassins as they were just teenagers, and they began killing Nazis and Nazi sympathizers. Another example is Miep Gies, who helped protect the Frank family, including Anne Frank, and others as they hid from the Nazis in the Netherlands. And one more is Sir Nicholas Winton, who just passed recently as well, and he organized the rescue and passage of about 670 uh, mostly Jewish Czechoslovakian children that were destined for Nazi death camps, and he essentially kept this secret for most of his life, even from his wife. Um, as he was just doing something that he thought was not even heroic, just something that he thought was necessary. He's extremely humble about it. 
Uh, those heroes I just gave you as an example, you will be watching a few other video clips on them uh, as you go forward. The books that I uh, recommended, many of them are uh, about, about the Holocaust, are from the Jewish Book Council, just as reference. And so that is now uh, the uh, sad and tragic story of persecution from the Holocaust. I encourage you to uh, find out more, uh, as it is extremely important for us to continue to remember the, uh, um, the tragedy and the brutality of this, so that we can ensure that something like this never happens again.